guys, it is Mr. Scotty Pie here, and in this video, um, obviously, we lost two legends of cinema. Um, I wanted to do a video where we talk about their achievements. I don't want to dwell on their passing, but celebrate their life and their work. So, the first one is a giant of cinema, and that is Olivia de Havilland. She was born the 1st of July 1916 and she passed away on the 25th of July 2020. She was an incredible 104 years old. What an age. She was a British American actress known as the last survivor of the golden age of cinema. At a time of passing, she was the oldest living Academy Award winner. That's impressive. She had a career that spanned 53 years. Her first film was in 1935. Her final film, 1988. That's a career that most actors can only dream of. And the things she achieved in that 53 years as well, it wasn't like she was making poor films for the sake of it. Her career is incredible 49 feature films she was involved with and many many more tv shows and uh, theater productions it's a career to be proud of it is definitely a career to be proud of so the two most notable roles in my opinion obviously everybody has their favorites i'd love to know what your favorites are uh, drop it in the comments let me know what your favorite of olivia's films are I do respond to all comments, so let's start a conversation. Um, the first notable film, I'd say, was The Adventures of Robin Hood. She played Maid Marian alongside the absolute legendary Errol Flynn. What an incredible, incredible, not just a film, but things being involved in. Robin Hood's obviously such a, uh, a franchise of films that goes on to this day. And The Adventures of Robin Hood with Errol Flynn. And Olivia D. Havilman, I'm sorry for getting that wrong, is obviously an iconic piece. But obviously the one that everybody knows her for is Gone With The Wind. One of the greatest movies in cinema history. I think this is one that she'll always be forever remembered for. Rightfully or wrongly, maybe it isn't, you might see it not as her best piece of work. But obviously this film is such... A masterpiece in filmmaking that it's not a bad film to be associated with and with an, an Oscar nomination for this film as well it's a film that I'm sure she was incredibly proud of and she rightfully so as well and we're talking about the awards she won let's just talk about some of these awards that she went on to won to win Oscar best actress in leading role for the film to each his own oscar win best actress in a leading role for the heiress two oscars most actors dream of one even a nomination she won twice she did get nominated as well for another oscar for two more oscars Three more Oscars. I look at my notes. She won two and got nominated three other times. Five times she was nominated. She won twice. That's beyond incredible. She got nominated twice for an actress in a leading role. That's four times she was nominated for that same award and won it twice. That's mental. That's something to be proud of. The two roles she was nominated for, for the actress in a leading role, was The Snake Pit and Hold Back the Dawn. What legendary pieces of work and to be recognised for your outstanding piece of work. As I said, she won a night for another Oscar, this time in a supporting role. That was Gone With The Wind. Obviously, I just recently spoke about how important that film is in the cinema. As it, as it is probably one of the most important films in cinema and the art of cinema. Her Oscar nominations and wins alone are phenomenal. But she didn't just win Oscars. She won t 
two Golden Globes and and a nomination, an Emmy. Her career is unstoppable. She was one of the biggest names in cinema throughout the 40s and 50s. So, think about the 40s, it was obviously a horrible time in the world, the Great War. And many people found solace in films and comfort in films. And Olivia de Havilland was their go-to leading lady. I'm sure she saved many a people with the morale she brought them with these films. The escapism she brought them for phenomenal acting. She brought so much joy to people in a time of great depression. Some people talk about the heroes of the soldiers. And obviously that's not to be doubted. The soldiers of not just now, but more significantly during the, the, the world wars are the greatest heroes this world has ever seen. But let's not diminish the power that entertainers brought. Because without them, the morale would have been so low, it would, what would have been worth fighting for? Entertainment and happiness was that reason. And the soldiers had the strength to carry on through cinema and film. And Olivia de Havilland was a pioneer. But not just a pioneer on screen. What she achieved off screen is phenomenal and changed the course of cinematic history and that's not building it up this is true let me just explain to you she had a seven-year contract with warner brothers which is what used to happen at the time you sign to a, a company not just jump between companies with films you would sign to a company and only work exclusively their films when her seven-year contract was over they informed her that it wasn't over she had six months left due to suspension what was she suspended for? She turned down some roles. Isn't that what all actors do nowadays? They turn down roles if they're not interested? Well, back in the day, you, that was the wrong thing to do. And if you turned down a role, you were suspended and you had to work on over your contract. Most actresses took that line down because they knew they couldn't escape this. One of the first to challenge this in the court of law was Betty Davis. She took Warner Brothers to court to get out of her contract because she didn't feel she should have been suspended. She was told she was wrong and Warner Brothers won. Olivia de Havilland, de Havilland wasn't going to take this line down. She took this to court. And you know what? She won. The California Court of Appeal ruled in her favour. And she was out of contract for the time that she was suspended because she didn't want to do a project that she didn't feel she didn't believe in. This changed cinema history forever because now the, the production companies didn't hold all the power. Their power was diminished and given to the performers. They gave the perform she she gave she personally gave the performers more creative freedom than they've ever had. And that's not changed. If anything, it's enhanced because of her. Her films will not live not just live on forever, but what she did in film, what she did for film, will live on to the end of days. She changed history. And for that reason we respect and love her. Dearly. If you ever feel like you miss her, put on one of her films because she's got such an amazing and fantastic career to look back on and to respect her and fall in love with her again and again. Olivia D. Haviland, we will miss you, but we will always love you. Sadly, there was another passing away of a cinema legend this this week and that was of the American the Italian American actor John Saxon. John Saxon was born on the 5th of August 1935 and died on the 25th of July 2020. He lived to the great age of 84 years old. His career spanned from 1954 until the film 
which is going to come out next year, 2021. His career hasn't even ended. His career lasted 67 years by next year when his final film is released. You thought Olivia de Havilland had a long career. John Saxon had a longer career. He had a, a, a he had 198 projects, according to IMDb. That's incredible. And his, his no, most notable films are Nightmare on Elm Street. And following up with A New Nightmare. Enter the Dragon, one of the greatest martial art films in history. He played Roper. Alongside the amazing Bruce Lee. Who I have such a love, Bruce Lee. And the fact that this man worked alongside him, for me, elevates him beyond. Because the stories that man must have had. He did a lot of work with horror. Horror is his main go-to. Obviously not just horror, he did many other things, but horror is what he's most notably known for, such as A Nightmare on Elm Street, and many, many other horror films. He was a superb actor in that field, and very highly respected. He was he won, he won an, um, a Golden Globe for the most promising newcomer for this happy feeling. He also had a Golden Globe nominee for the Best Supporting Actor for the for the applause Appaloosa. Sorry, I'm gonna get it right. Appaloosa. I don't risk get things wrong. And obviously, watch my videos. I get things wrong all the time. But talking about such legends and some of their greatest formats, I don't want to get anything wrong for them. I want to honour their legacies forever. John Saxon may not have put a big of a stamp on. In the world of cinema as Olivia de Havilland but that doesn't mean it should be dismissed as easily as it shouldn't be dismissed at all he created a market for himself he created a fan base a legacy a legacy and a fan base that are going to miss him dearly he achieved many things and a, and it can be shown in his long long longevity longevity in the film industry. John Saxon, you're a legend and you'll be dearly missed. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any stories about John Saxon or Olivia de Havilland, please drop it in the comments. I respond to all the comments and I'd love to hear these stories so badly. So let's start a conversation and tell me what you have. Not is that don't have your personal stories. Maybe stories that you've heard over passing. I'd love to hear every single one of them. So please drop it in the comments. And I hope you have a good day. And I hope you remember these legends as I will. Thank you very much. And goodbye.